Uh, well, I think, I think it says, um, I, I, th I think that, um, well, I, I, I believe in the resurrection of Christ. I think that. The bodily uh, resurrection. The bodily resurrection of Christ. So I think that's the central miracle. Um, and uh, I, th I think that, uh, I think that there is a way in which it gives us an understanding of, of, of the world. I think that it is, um, you know, there's, uh, I, I studied under Rene Girard, who's this uh, um, professor at Stanford, who um, I think was one of the greater Christian thinkers of the, uh, of, of the 20th century. And um, I, I think that there's an anthropology in Christianity. There's an understanding of, of human nature um, where we're in the image of God, we're mimetic, we try to, um, you know, we need, we need good role models. The only good role model for us is Christ. You know, all other role models lead to interpersonal conflicts of, of one sort or another. Um, and, um, and so I think there are sort of a, a lot of things about it that are, that are true. There's sort of ways we can, you know, offer an apologetic for it, um, you know, but it, but it is, you know, on some, on some level, uh, I, I, often, I often think that uh, if you go back to the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments, I often think um, that the, the two most important ones are the first and last on the list, the first commandment and the tenth. The first one is you should only worship God you should look up to, um, to, to the one true God. Um, and then the tenth one is you should um, not look around at your neighbor. You should not covet the things that belong to your neighbor. And uh, when, um, you know, when you do not have a transcendent uh, religious belief, it, um, you end up just looking around at other people. And I think, uh, and I think that is sort of the problem with, um, with our sort of atheist liberal world, that it is, um, it is just the madness of crowds. It's it, it's 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 um it's it's not it's not reason. It's it's not rational. It's just mass insanity. Does that tie into your idea in the um, in the book? It's, it's it's there's always a you know I always think if you sort of contrast a evangelical Christian Bible study where the you know, the outward facing thing is often that people are somehow more moral or, or better and then the inward facing thing is that you're kind of sinful and that you have to there's a lot of stuff you fix if you were in the Bible study and said you know I figured out I'm, everything's perfect in my life uh, you probably haven't quite gotten the message <laughs> but I um, but whatever the sort of paradoxes and contradictions around that are I think there's sort of an, a strange contrast with what I sort of describe as the atheist rationalist uh, sort of group where the outward facing thing is that you're more rational than people and the inward facing thing is that you're not capable of thought at all. That it's just spaghetti code and the mind is not capable of thought. And to, to use the sort of Thomistic medieval distinction, uh, you know, the, the medievals believed in the weakness of the will but the power of the intellect and the moderns believe in the power of the will but the weakness of the intellect. And so I think, um, you know, yes, I think faith and reason are compatible. and. Um, and in fact, uh, in fact, when, when you get rid of faith, you end up in a world where there's no reason either. And, that's, and we're living in a much less rational world than we lived in 100 years ago. Do you, when you talk about um, you know, coveting, uh, do, in, in your book, uh, Zero to One, you talk about how when um, you're trying to build a company and, and, and when they get stuck on competing with you know, uh, Hertz, or Avis, whatever it is, when, when they get uh, stuck on competing, they lose sight of the larger goal, which is not just to, de to defeat the other guy, but uh, to do something greater or whatever. D do those ideas tie together, or am I just making that? Sure, sure. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're too focused on um, your enemies, your rivals, your competition, it becomes very hard to form a team that's going to work on some transcendent goal or transcendent purpose. Um, you know, if you if you categorize it in terms of the seven mortal sins of medieval Catholicism, I always think um, you know you can sort of debate which ones are the worst. You know, officially pride is supposed to be the worst. I, I, I always think you can use Gilligan's Island as sort of a mnemonic for this, where the professor is pride and you know the skipper is anger and Mr. Howell is greed and Mrs. Howell is sloth. That's why she married Mr. Howell. Um, and uh, you know, Ginger is lust. Gilligan's always eating food. He's gluttony. But um, Marianne? But Marianne's envy. She wants to be Ginger. And, um, <laughs> and, um, and I think, um, and I, think uh, I think in some ways, um, that, that's the one I, I, I'm most worried about, the Marianne's in our society. And that's, that's here, that, here. That, I believe that's the, that's the, uh, that's the, that's the, that's the, uh, 
um, envy is it, is, it is the one mortal sin that is still completely taboo. All the others can be sort of turned into something positive. You know, greed is good, Gordon Gecko, whatever. You know, there's sort of ways you can flip all the others right. around. Um, you know, envy is, is the one we still don't talk about. And um, as a result, I suspect it's the one that's somehow still uh, sort of pervasive and, and the most destructive. Um, to, uh, to bring things to a shallower level briefly, uh, I should point out that in 2006, we did a Socrates in the City event uh, around C.S. Lewis. Um, and my friend, the film director, Norman Stone, is here. He had directed a film about C.S. Lewis. And who showed up with a friend uh, to that event, to my shock, but I have a picture, Tina, Lu Tina Louise, who played Ginger. Uh, just, just so we know uh, that that really happened. That really happened. Um, well, you, you, you talk about, uh, in, in the book, and this is, it's all related. I mean, it's, uh, it's interesting to me. But you say that uh, we've given up our sense of wonder at secrets left to be discovered. So to go back to the beginning of the conversation, the idea that you know, we could wipe out cancer or Alzheimer's or, or anything like that. Um, so, so two questions. Uh, first of all, why are you hopeful, if, if you are hopeful? And also related to the sense of wonder and the secrets left to be discovered, I think somehow I would argue, and maybe this goes against this interiority idea of yours, but that God, faith in God, is an endlessly self-revealing secret. In other words, that as we pursue God, uh, we are inescapably pursuing a kind of science because to know God is to become more and more grounded in the reality of his creation, and that those things... Um, are, are related. So, so the first question was, why are you hopeful if you think we've given up our sense of wonder at secrets left to be discovered? Well, I, I, I think, um, I don't think we're at the end of history. I don't think we know everything. Um, um, I, I certainly refuse to believe that everything has been discovered that's going to be discovered. And uh, I think there are all sorts of contexts where, where we can um, still, um, still come, come to understand uh, Understand new things. I, I think, um, you know, just to push back a little bit on, um, uh, you know, sort of the, the. I don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with Christian interiority the way you describe it, but um, I, I always think it would be somewhat inadequate if if it was just that and nothing more. You know, uh, when when I was you know when I was an undergraduate, the sort of the campus crusade idea was still always you know, God has a plan for you and for your life, and you could figure it out, but then it would translate into a vocation, to something you were supposed to do. We don't talk like that anymore. As a culture, not just Christians. You know, as, as, generally as, 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 as Christians, we don't talk like that anymore. And we, it's, it's sort of much more uh, sort of pop psychology, um, a la Jordan Peterson, or, or something like that. And I, I don't think, um, I, I think it has to be more than, than just psychological. You, 